live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Modern Customer Experience 2017. Brought to you by Oracle. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live, day two coverage of Oracle's Modern CX, Modern Customer Experience, hashtag Modern CX. Also check out all the great coverage here on, on theCUBE, but also on the web, a lot of great stories. And uh, one of the, the per people behind all that is Des Cahill is joining Peter Burris and myself. Kicking off day two, Des, great to see you. You're head of uh, Customer Experience Evangelist. Uh, involved in a lot of the formation and really the simplification of the messaging cross cloud, so it's really one story. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome so, to the John, show. Peter, great to be here. You know, I think the real story is about our customers and businesses that are going through transformation. So, everything that we're doing at Oracle and our CX organizations, helping these organizations make their digital business transformation, and the reason they're going through this transformative process is to meet the demands of their customers. I'd say it's the era of the empowered customer. They were empowered by social, mobile, cloud technologies, and all of us in our daily lives can relate to the fact that over the last five, 10 years, the way that we buy, our journey as we buy products, as we do research, is completely different. Talk about, the evolution right? of, talk about the evolution of what's happening this week because I think this is kind of a mark in time, at least from our observation covering Oracle. This is our eighth year and certainly second year with the, uh, the modern marketing experience now, yep. modern customer experience, where the feedback in on the floor, and this is noteworthy, is that the quality is great, people at the booth are highly qualified, but it's simple, it's not, it's, it's one fabric of messaging, one fabric of, of product, it feels like a platform. Yeah. And is that, by design, or is that uh, kind of the, the next step in the evolution of yeah, John, marketing that, cloud meets yeah. real cloud? And yeah, yeah, so absolutely, John. I mean, that, that is by design. And uh, again, to support our customers and their needs on this digital business transformation journey, uh, it starts obviously with fantastic marketing. We've just got fantastic capabilities within our marketing cloud, but then that extends to sales cloud. If, if you generate leads in marketing and you're not handing them over to sales, effectively or have a good sales uh, automation engine. And that goes on to commerce, CPQ, social, and service. And all of this, if we bring this back down to, again, this notion of the empowered customer, if you're not providing those customers with connected experiences across marketing, sales, service, commerce, uh, you're not, you're gonna, you might lose those customers. I mean, we, we expect connected experiences across our whole journey. If, we're, if I'm calling my uh, cell phone provider because I got a problem, I, I don't, and I, I don't want to call uh, one person, get transferred to another person, then, then go to the, the website to chat with someone, have a disconnected experience. I want them to, when I call, I want them to understand my history, my status as a customer. I'm spending $500 a month on them, the problems I've had before. I want them to have context and to know me in that moment. And it, it's, as Mark Hurd says, it's like a moment of truth. With my cell phone provider, are they are they going to delight me and turn me into a customer advocate, or am I going to leave and go to another cell phone provider? Well, let's talk just for a second, and I want to get your comments on this and how it relates specifically to what we're seeing here. There are d digital has two enormous impacts. One, as you said, that a customer can take their research activities with them on yep. their cell phone. Uh, they have learned, because of commerce and electronic commerce, they've learned to expect and demand a certain style of engagement. Right. And that's not going to change. So if you're not doing those things. We like to say Amazon is a new benchmark. Well, it is. B2B to C or B2B. It, it is doesn't a new matter. benchmark. Right. Uh, at least on the commerce side. So, yeah. it's, it's, uh, so that's one change, is that customers are empowered. The second big change, though, is that increasingly, digital allows people to render products more as services. Now that's in many respects what the cloud's all about. How do you take right. an asset that is a machine and render it as a service to someone? Well now we can actually use digital technologies to render things more as services. The combination of those two things are incredibly powerful because customers who now have the power to evaluate and change decisions all the time are now constantly making decisions because it's a pay-as-you-go service world Right. Now. So how do those two things come together and inform the role that marketing is going to play inside a business? Because increasingly it seems to us that marketing is going to have to own that continuous, ongoing engagement and deliver that consistent value so a customer does not leave. Because you have more opportunities to leave now. 
Well, I, I, so I think that's a good observation, Peter. I, I do think that marketers can play and w do play a leading role in being the advocate for the customer within the brand, within the company. And uh, as, as a marketer myself, I think about uh, not just the marketing function, but I think about, well, what is the experience that that, that lead or that prospect going to have when I hand over to sales? And what is the experience that they're going to have when I hand them over mm -hmm. to service? And in my past roles as a CMO, um, the, the challenge I always faced was that I couldn't get information out of the sales automation system or out of the service automation system. So as a marketer, I couldn't optimize my marketing mix and I didn't have visibility on which, which opportunities I passed, my, which leads I passed over turned into the best opportunities, turned into the best deals, turned into the customers that were most loyal, that got cross-sold and upsold, and were the happiest. So I, I think, going back to Oracle's strategy on all of this, uh, it's about having a connected end-to-end -end suite of cloud applications yeah. so that there's a consistent set of data that is enabling these uh, consistent, personalized, and immediate experiences. I think that's interesting, and I want to just validate that, because I think that is, to me, the big uh, sign that I think you guys are on the right track and, and executing. And by the way, some of the things are you're talking about used to be the holy grail, they're actually real now. Right. The dynamic is the silos are a symptom of a digital analog relationship. Right. So when you have all digital, the moment of truth starts here, it's all digital. So in that paradigm, end to end wins. And at Mobile World Congress this year, one of the, the main themes when they talk about 5G and all these things yeah. that were going on was you know, autonomous vehicles, <laughs> media entertainment, smart cities, the smart home, you know, talk to things. To your point, that's an end-to-end, -end, so the entire world wants... Throw IoT in there. Throw IoT, so again, right. these digital connections are all connected, so therefore, it is essentially an end-to-end -end opportunity, so whoever can optimize that end-to-end -end while being open, while having access to the data, right. will be the winning formula. Right, and then that the, is something that we see, and you obviously have that. And then, and you, then the other piece is how do you actualize that data, right? And I, I know you you spoke with Jack Berkowitz about the adaptive intelligent yeah. apps. It's we're we're taking approach to artificial intelligence of saying how can we bring to bear the power of machine learning, dynamic decision science, so that all this data that's, that's being connect, collected and enabled by all these digital touch points, these digital signals, how do you take that data and how do you actualize that? Because the, the reality is, 80% of data that's collected today is dark. It's untouched, well, this is the it's hard, just collected. This, here's a hard question right? for you. You know I'm going to ask this, so I'm going to ask it. Here's a hard question. Yep. It really comes down to the data. And if you don't, connected networks and all that good stuff is great fabric end to end. Absolutely, This yep. is certainly the future, it's a new normal, it's coming fast. Right. But at the end of the day, the conversation we've been having here is about the data. Yes. What is your position with Oracle on connecting that data? Because that ultimately is what needs to flow. Right. How does that work? Can you just take a minute to, sure, sure. to address the, so how I the think, data flows? I, yeah, I think, I think it starts with our end-to-end um, -end connected applications that are able to, that are connected with each other natively and are sharing that same, that, that same data set. Uh, we obviously recognize that customers have mixed environments, so in those cases we can certainly use our technologies to connect to their existing data stores, to synchronize with their existing systems. So it all starts with the cleanliness um, and quality of that baseline customer data. The second piece I'd say is that we've made a lot of investments over the last five years in the Oracle Data Cloud. And the Oracle Data Cloud is a set of anonymized uh, third-party data. We've got five billion uh, consumer IDs, we've got a billion business IDs, uh, we've got a tremendous amount of data sources. We just announced a, a recent acquisition of a company called Moat uh, last week at our uh, Oracle Data Cloud Summit in New York City. So we've made a tremendous investment in uh, third-party data that can augment, anonymized third-party data that can augment first-party data to allow people to have not just a connected view of the customer, but a more of a comprehensive view and understanding of their customers so that they can better uh, talk to them and give that, them better That's the key there that we're hearing with this uh, intelligent, adaptive intelligent app yep. kind of environment. Where yes. Machine learning. The third-party data integrating within the first-party data. That seems to be the key. Is Absolutely. that right? Did I get that right? Yeah, well I, I would say there's a number of points. So I'd say that, that uh, you, know, you can think of the Oracle Data Cloud uh, combining with the Blue Kai DMP and being a great ad tech business for us and a great solution for digital markers in and of itself. What we've done with adaptive intelligent apps is that we've combined that third party data with decision science, machine learning, AI, 
and we've coupled that with the Oracle Cloud infrastructure and the scale and power of that. So we're able to de deliver real-time adaptive uh, learning and uh, dynamic offers and content at 130 millisecond clip. So this is real-time interaction. So we're getting signals every time someone clicks. It's not a batch mode, one-off kind of thing. The third piece is that we have uh, designed these, design these apps to just embed natively to plug into our existing CX applications. So if you're a marketer, you're a service professional, you're a sales professional, you can get value out of this day one. You've got a tremendous data set, you've got real-time adaptive um, artificial intelligence, and it plugs right into your existing apps. It's, it's a win-win. Take your first party data, take your third party data, combine it together, put some decision science on there, some high bandwidth, incredible scale infrastructure, and you're, getting, you're starting to get to one-to-one -one marketing. You're, you're, you're freeing your marketing teams from um, being data analysts and segmenting and trying to get insight, and you're letting the machine do that work, and you're freeing up, you're freeing up your human capital to be thinking about higher level tasks, about offers and merchandising and uh, creative and campaigns and channels. Well, the way we think about it, uh, Des and I'll test, test you on this, is that we, we think ultimately the machines are going to offer options. So they're, they're going to do triage on a lot of this data and they'll right. offer options right. to human decision makers. Some of the discretion, so we, we see three levels of interaction. Yeah. Automated interaction, which quite frankly, we're doing a lot of that today in finance systems. Yes. Uh, but then we get to autonomous vehicles, highly deterministic networks, highly deterministic behaviors. Right. That's what's going to be required in autonomy. No uncertainty. Where we have environmental uncertainty, i.e. that uh, temperature is going to change or I, some IOT thing's going to change, we, that's where we see the, the idea of turning the data and, and uh, actuating it in the context of that environmental uncertainty. Right. We think that this is all going to have an impact on, on, the, on the human side, what we call systems of augmentation, right. where we're, the system's going to provide options to uh, a human decision maker, the discretion stays with the human decision maker, culpability stays with the human right. decision maker, but the quality of the options determine the value of the system. So the augmentation is. So, so, the so the let, me, let, me, let me give you a key. great example of that with AIA. So uh, take for example, uh, you're a pro photographer and you got a big shoot the next day and your camera, your main camera you bought three months ago, it, it, it breaks. And you buy all your stuff at photog.com and you, call them up and what could happen today? Hi, what's your account number? Who are you? Wait, let me look you up. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not authorized to get you a return, you know, well, you know, boom. And the person's like, I'm never going to buy from them again, right? It's that moment of truth. Contrast that with a, because the person making that decision, if, if it was the CEO getting that call, the CEO would be like, we're going to get you a camera immediately. But that, that person that they're talking to is five levels down in a call center in Bismarck, North Dakota. If that person had AI, adaptive intelligent apps helping them out, then the AI would do the, the work in the background of analyzing the customer's lifetime value, their, their social reach, so their indirect lifetime value. It would look at their customer health, how many other service issues that they have. It would look at, are there any warranty issues or, or known service failure issues on that camera? And then it would look at a list of stores that were within a five mile radius of that customer that had those cameras in stock and it would authorize an immediate pickup and you're, you're on your way, uh, right? Guys, you it would just, just inform that person and enable them to make that decision. Even more than that, and this is a crucially important point that I think people don't get when they talk about a lot of this stuff. These systems have to deliver not only data, but also authority. Exactly, The authority exactly. has to flow right. with the data. Yeah. Right. That's one of on the advantages. On both sides, by the way. The on both sides. On the identity right. and, and, and I think that right. I think that employee wants that empowerment. Absolutely. No one wants to take a call and not make the customer happy. Absolutely. Right? Because, it, yeah. that's, and that's a challenge with some of the bolt-on approaches to some of these big applications. Is that, exactly. yeah, you can deliver a result, but then how is the result how is integrated into the process right. that defines and affords authority to actually make the decision? Okay, so let's just, where are we on the progress bar then? Because we had a great interview yesterday uh, with the CMO from Time Warner. Yeah. Okay, uh, Kristen O'Hara, she was amazing. But basically, there was no old way of doing data. They were Time Warner, they're old school media. And they set up a project, you guys came in, Oracle came in, and essentially got them up and running, right. and it's changed their business practice right. overnight. Right. So, and the other thing we heard yesterday was, a lot of the stuff that was holy grail-like capabilities is actually being delivered. So, give us, um, Slice and dice, what's shipping today that's, that's hot 
and where's the work area that's roadmap for, for Oracle? Sure. And where well, you guys that, are helping customers. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about a couple of examples where we're helping customers. Um, so Denon and Morantz, high-end audio company, brand that's been around 100 years. The way music is delivered, uh, is consumed, has changed radically in the last 20 years, changed radically in the last 10 years, changed even more radically in the last five years. So they've had to change their business model to keep up with that. They are embedding Oracle IoT Cloud into every product they sell except their headphones, so all their speakers, all their AV receivers. And they are using IoT data and Oracle Service Cloud to inform not only service issues, um, like for example, they are, they're detecting failures proactively and they're shipping out new speakers before they fail, or they're, pu they're pushing firmware to fix the problem before it happens. Um, they're not only using it to inform their service, they're using it to inform their R&D and their sales and marketing. Great example, they, they ship wireless speakers, Heos wireless speakers, highly recommend them. I bought them for my kids for Christmas, they're, they're the bomb. But customers were starting to, they were getting a lot of failures on these wireless speakers. They looked up the customer data, then they looked up the IoT data, they found that 80% of the speaker failures, the, the the products were labeled bathroom as location in the, in the configuration in the home, in the home network uh, setup. And what they realized is that customers were listening to music in the bathroom, which is a use case they never thought of, and the speakers weren't made to be water humidity proof. So they went to the R&D department, 14 months later they shipped a line of waterproof HEO speakers. Second thing is they found people were labeling their speakers patio. They were using that on the patio. They didn't even have a rechargeable battery on it. So they came out with a line with a rechargeable battery on it. So they're not only using IoT data for a machine maintenance function, they're using Consumer IoT behavior. data to inform, um, in, inform R&D, and they're also doing incredible marketing uh, and sales activities. We had Don Freeman, the CMO of Dannon on the, on the main stage yesterday talking about this. Great, great stuff they're doing. Oh, what's the coolest thing this week that, that you're, you're looking at, you're proud of or excited about? Uh, I'm, I'm excited about a lot of stuff, John. This, this week is real, as you alluded to, this week has been really, really fun, really great, a lot of buzz. Uh, obviously a lot of buzz around adaptive intelligent apps and we, we've talked yeah. about that. But I would say also beyond adaptive intelligent apps for CX, um, we've introduced some, some great things in our service cloud, uh, the, the capability to have a video chat. So Pella Windows was also on one of our panels today, and they were talking about the ability for, to solve a service issue, the ability to, to show video of what's going on just increases the speed with which something can be, can be diagnosed uh, so, much, so much faster. Yeah. We're integrating on the service cloud, we're integrating with WeChat, and we're integrating with Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Now why would you do that? Well again, it comes back to this era of the empowered consumer. It's not enough that a company just has a website yeah. or an 800 number that you can go to for support. Consumers are spending more time in social messaging apps than they are on social messaging sites. So if consumer wants to be served in Facebook Messenger because they spend their yeah. time in it, the brand has to meet them there. The, the yeah. third thing would be uh, the ability for the marketing cloud um, and service and sales cloud. We've got chatbots, voice driven, text driven, AI driven, so mobile assistant for the sales professional so you can input data on the road. Hey, open an account, here's the data for the transaction, here's what's going on. Yeah. Uh, incredible, incredible stuff going on all over the stack. I think the thing that excites me is I looked at the videos from last year and, and the theme was, man, you guys have all these awesome acquisitions, right. but you have this opportunity with the data, and you guys knew that, and, and you guys tighten that together and double down on the data. Uh, we, oh um, yeah, thank and, you. Yeah, we, and we so I thought that was uh, a great job, and I like the messaging's clean, I think, but more importantly is, is that, in any sea change, you know, we, we, we joke about this because we're kind of like historians and we've seen a lot of waves. Right, for sure. In all these major waves, when the user's expectations shift, that's the opportunity. I think what you guys nailed here the, is that, and Peter alluded to it as well, is that the users are expecting things differently. Completely different. Let me share a stat with you. 50% of the companies that were in the Fortune 500 in the year 2000 are either out of business, acquired, gone, 50%. And those companies, Blockbuster, Adapt Borders, did they stay relevant? Yeah, I think changing business practice based on data is what's happening, it's awesome. Des Cahill here on theCUBE, more live coverage, day two of Modern CX, Modern Customer Experience, hashtag Modern CX, this is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris, we'll be right back.